conditioning. Conditioning is probably the primary barrier to any spiritual seeker's growth. You can think of conditioning as almost like a muscle, an unconscious muscle. Um, your brain says one thing, but the larger this muscle is, the less likely it is that you're going to live those actions. You won't be in harmony. You'll be dissatisfied with that aspect of your life. For the person who's trying to become closer to God, that conditioning, the, the uh, self-centeredness, the self-importance, is the barrier to God. For the spiritual seeker who is looking for enlightenment, the conditioned concept of I exist or I am real is the barrier. But we have many, many conditioned muscles. The Most people, their conditioned identity, uh, all those muscles are, are well developed, like a weightlifter, like Arnold Schwarzenegger in his prime days. But for the sage, the sage seeks to be like a 98 pound weakling. He wants to lose that conditioning, but it doesn't happen right away. When it comes to enlightenment, the conditioning, the conditioned concept that affects us most is the unconscious belief that you exist, that you are a real entity, a uh, individual entity. Now you can understand this consciously very easily. I mean, that's what the, the path of inquiry is for. It's to look at yourself and say, oh, you know, I'm not this. I can see th this aspect of myself, so I can't be it. I'm the observer of it. And so you can weaken the thought process quite easily, the conscious process quite easily. But as long as that unconscious muscle of conditioned I exist still is there, you can't wake up. You can think you're woken up. You, you can think you're awake. You know, you, you've satisfied the conscious criteria, but as long as that condition not of self is still there, it will affect your life and, and you won't live it. You'll talk it, but you won't be able to walk it and you'll be in constant conflict with yourself. When you do wake up, when that muscle weakens enough to where it's seen through and it just falls away, the personal self falls away. So that's what I mean by that. You are still affected by other conditioning. Uh, the old conditioning of uh, self-concern, the conditioning of uh, ambition. These things will still affect you if you don't address those. Those muscles are still there. They can't fall away on their own. They have to be looked at and brought out of the unconscious and, 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 and weakened. But on the prior side of enlightenment, before you wake up, that's your primary conditioned muscle. Think of it as like a muscle. It has to be weakened and it's unconscious. It's down in there. Now, the reason I subscribe so adamantly to living as a soul is because it quickly weakens many of the, what I call the mortal muscles. The, uh, the muscle of I have to win all the time. The muscle of I'm important. The muscle of uh, fear. I'm afraid of dying. I'm afraid of what, go, what might go wrong. Those muscles are all based on believing that you are a person who is going to die. When you live as a soul, when you live as if you're going to live forever, that stuff loses important, importance very quickly and those muscles will quickly weaken. But the key is not just to think you're a soul, but to actually live it. It's to actually live your life this way so that you can see where your actions aren't matching your words. And that's how you, you address it. That's how you address, that's how you decondition yourself. You compare your words, you compare your conscious thoughts, 
with your actions and your feelings. And if those aren't in harmony, that's where the conditioning, the, the conditioned knot of whatever it is that's affecting you, self-importance, the needing to win, is affecting you. And by looking at that, comparing your thoughts with your life, the muscles quickly weaken. Eventually you'll move that on to the enlightened point where you look at yourself and that muscle eventually weakens. But even after that, after awakening, you'll still be affected by conditioning. I'm getting rained on here, I'm afraid, a little bit. Um, and I guess that's all I have to say about that.